Hey all, Jay here. Out in the uh, man cave. I need to come up with a new name. Man cave is so overused now. I like to call it the war room. I think that's what I log as, the war room. Um, if you've been following my videos, you know I, I started six months ago with a 3D Systems uh, Cube uh, 3D printer. And quickly learned that that's a much of a, a sandbox printer. It, it liked working with the, their website and it could print, you know, a fair amount of Thingiverse, but, and if you use their uh, Cube uh, 3D software, you could get okay results, but that, that's one of the reasons I sort of put it to the side, and five months ago I bought a... Uh, uh, MakerBot 2X, which is the dual collar ABS printer from uh, MakerBot. And you saw my unboxing, and I, I've done some uh, follow ups, but you know that went to work and it's just churning out parts, you know, like two or three a week, just prototype. Um, and then, like four months ago, I got my uh, MakerBot Replicator 2 which is the single head uh, PLA uh, 3D printer. And you saw the unboxing for that, and I've got a few videos up. Uh, it, it worked absolutely perfect for three months. And uh, the uh, thermocouple, which, uh, no, I don't think it was the thermocouple. The, uh, the nozzle got clogged because of some very cheap, crappy uh, film that I got off Amazon from 3D Printing USA, some black. Oh my god, uh, that's clogtastic stuff there, boy, let me tell you. So, I fought that for a week, and uh, MakerBot was sold out of the Mark 8 nozzles, uh, so some friends uh, sent me some Mark 7s, and then I bought some more off eBay. Uh, Mark 7s are a lot cheaper and easier to get than the Mark 8 nozzle. And from what I can tell, and I may be wrong, the only difference is the bottom chamfer of the comb where it comes down into the nozzle. Uh, <clears throat> the Mark 8 had a different cut, so you got more of a good fill of material. You didn't get burps or air pockets or stuff. But that being said, they're, they're functionally the same. Uh, uh, Jet Guy on the uh, Google MakerBot operators forum uh, said, yeah, the Mark 7 nozzle should, should work fine. And, and they they do. I can't tell the difference. Uh, except, like I said, on eBay, you can get them like 10 for 30 bucks. So they're like $3 each. The uh, Mark 8 nozzles, I think, are $22 each for MakerBot. But, uh, or whatever it is, it's, it's significantly higher than 3 bucks each. Um, so I, I got that straight. And then my damn uh, filament drive gear um, started slipping. Um, I think his name's Joseph Chu on uh, MakerBot Operators, the Google groups. He pointed out that there's a D-shaft on the stepper motor, and that drive gear has a set screw that is supposed to hit the flat so that it can't turn. It gets a nice lock on it. Well, the problem was they didn't machine it far enough down, so when you bottomed out that gear, instead of being a D-shape that it could touch against, it was completely round. So it would touch, but it had nothing to keep it from riding around. So sure enough, I looked, and I had worn a little ring, might have been slipping, which causes it to act like it's clogged because it's trying to, to move the filament and just, you know, sitting there knocking it like it does when it's jammed. So, I fixed that. Well, it started doing it again. I thought, I had, man, I got another clogged no nozzle. I just put it on there. And I said, wait, let me check that uh, drive gear. Sure enough, it had backed out where I, I had uh, fixed it by, by grinding the, the flat a little bit deeper. So, it would, the set screw would grab it. But it had actually backed out. So, uh, Jet Guy again pointed out, well, you know, you got to get that flat, really flat. So, I took the Dremel and machined it even more so it was nice and flat. And I used uh, Loctite and put it on this time. So the Loctite, it shouldn't move. And ever since then, it's been printing like it was the day I got it. It's just been perfect. 
I'm, I'm not tempted to uh, try the black yet. I've got some silver on there that I got off of Amazon, I think. Yeah. And it's from a new company. But until I get more into this role, I'm not going to say uh, who it is in my review of it yet because it was effing up earlier, but that was because the driver was loose, so I don't know if it's the PLA. And now I've got a pretty long print on here. It's, I don't know, this is four hours. It's not real long. But, uh, and it looks like it's printing perfect. So I'll have a review of that later after I get deeper into this roll. Um, old nylon. If you guys have noticed, I've set up uh, this replicator to print nylon. And I've done that by replacing the uh, build state, the build plate arms, which is your z-axis. It had these plastic arms that, that sit and act like a cantilever to lower the uh, build tray up and down. Well, I took those arms out because they have a tendency to, to uh, heat creep just by themselves. And if you print a nylon, you're going to be printing at an elevated temperature, which exacerbates that. So I replaced the arms with uh, aluminum ones that's made by Bradley. He uh, goes by uh, Bottle Works on the Maker Bot Google Groups Maker Bot operators. I'm trying to say net four times fast. But uh, and then I also the carriage, the part that holds the extruder, which on a typical printer that's what moves back and forth over the paper. The carriage sits between the parallel arms on the top and it moves back and forth, well it's plastic, which normal PLA temperatures, ABS temperatures, max is 230, it should be fine, 230C. But nylons, you know, sometimes 245, uh, some people said um, 260, I, I don't know, and some other materials I haven't started printing yet, print at that higher temperature too, like, I don't think PET is, but uh, maybe the urethane, is like 250. So, but I hadn't got there yet. But because I replaced those parts, I'm ready for it. Because the carriage now is aluminum and the arms are aluminum. And I'm printing on these plates, which I we had I made them at work. Uh, this is the material we stock, it's canvas grade phenolic. Some of the other guys are using uh, G11, which is a glass grade, but uh, you're just it's it's that platinum finish. It's what it's, it's sticking to. And as you can see, I took mine and just scuffed it a little bit. Because mine was, mine was too slick. I scuffed it a little bit. And uh, I've been, if you look at my videos, I've been putting nylon on it. I'm not going to set it up right now. Uh, there's videos that I made on there where I did. Because now i got to set it back up for PLA. Um, and, and also, I, I kept one of the phenolic plates and put blue tape. Like what comes with it on the phenolic, because these things are dead-ass flat, uh, even more so than the acrylic. Uh, so when you set these, I mean, they're pretty good. I was looking at those arms that are out there now, those, that, that go on the, uh, the uh, cantilever arms, and basically it's got little wings that hold the edges in place. But with this, I don't think you need that. You might with the acrylic, the original, but with these phenolic ones, man, I mean, they're dead flat. Uh, you know, see, we did... Um, plain these it, at work to make them uh, thick, the exact thickness fit in there. Because this is in millimeters and this is in inches. Um, what else? Oh, I got a, I bought a, another replicator. I got another 2X coming. Uh, the more I've been printing over, here, over the last four or five, six months, uh, at first I didn't like ABS. Because I didn't understand how to print it right, it would warp and curl and crack. I mean, I was just like, Wah! I hate this crap. Um, and that's because I was trying to bit print big things on them, like here at home. And I had to take it to work and get it in a controlled atmosphere where I had it, everything set up right. And I had, you know, really learn how to tram it. You know, get the level right. So now at work, I can print a lot of cool stuff out and I, and I understand how to do it and doesn't crap up on me. Um, so I did that and I had my two and I was playing with the PLA and you know, I was like, oh, PLA, but you know, there's, there's stuff PLA doesn't do that ABS does. 
So I'm getting to the point where I think I need both. And I ran into a pretty good deal on a 2X. And right now, 2Xs, if you order them, are now 10 weeks out. You know, the first time I got my 2, 2X, the first time, they said they were 8 weeks out. And I looked up and found a guy in California that had them in stock. Uh, Maker Shed. But even Maker Shed's out right now. So it's 8 to 10 weeks to get them. Uh, this guy had one that's got like 20 hours on it. And he's got that and 7 rolls of material and the, head, the hood which the hood takes four to six weeks longer after you get your printer, it sounds like, to get the hood. So, I, I got a 2X coming down. I, I'll put it over here, I guess. And I still got the cube. I was going to donate it to the high school, and I got a lot of, I uh, bought several uh, rolls of PLA to, you know, to give them. And I set it at work and sort of forgot about it. Um, but I still got stuck to, stuck over there. I don't know what to do with it yet. Uh, I know, give it to high school. But, uh, so I'll have my two set $20 workbench that you've heard me talk about in my reloading videos that you can get from Harbor Freight. It's the perfect size for the replicator. I mean, exactly. And I've got all those uh, bench dog uh, vibration isolator feet. Uh, they're pucks. They're made for like a woodworking shop that you have heavy equipment you want to sit on something, like a planer, and you don't want it to jostle everything else around it. So it's basically it's a big hunk of urethane with an ABS ring around it. <laughs> Wish I could print that. But, and I might be able to eventually. But you sit them on that and it, it makes a great table and it's, you know, like I said, 20 bucks of Harbor Freight. You don't have to use the bench dogs, you just sit it on there. Um, so anyway, that, that's where we're at now. I'll be putting some more videos up of parts and I got a bunch of gun videos to put up. I, you know, people's been complaining, why have you put the reviews up you said you're going to? You know, I don't know. Bought some magazines, uh, FNFAL guys. I got some of those uh, plastic ones, the uh, Tapcos. We'll see how they do. Uh, they didn't do good the first time, but I brought them home and played with them. And uh, filed some edges smooth. And, uh, we'll see how they do the next time out. But anyway, that's where we are now. Caught up. Got my kid off to school, so now I have three out of four kids out of here. Uh, my third son, Holden, is now in college. I told him, don't get kicked out and don't come back. <laughs> and I'll pay for it as long as you're there. But, uh, so, you know, I got one kid, man, and then I got the uh, emptiness syndrome. All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a good night.